Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? We are ready to get into the next match as I hit the start game button. What we're doing here today is we are inviting individuals from the community who want to get better at StarCraft 2 uh, to play on stream and receive some guidance in their play. Um, right now we're going to have Hajax and Duck Goose playing against each other, and they've muted the stream. Hey, Jax and Duck Goose, if you're watching this right now and you haven't muted the stream, please do so at this time. But um, they will be available to, they'll be able to watch the stream afterwards on VOD and learn from what I say, hopefully. Uh, all VODs, 1080p on YouTube, absolutely free to watch. It might be, it might take an hour or two for the VODs to get up, um, but they will be there. So we have our first mirror match of the night. It's going to be Masters versus Masters. Now, I know some of y'all are like, Axel Tosh, you're a liar. Axel Tosh, you're a liar. I saw the score screen. It was a gold and it was a diamond. Well, I trust these guys. And uh, Duck Goose said he's Masters on or he's masters on EU. And H-Jack says he was Masters last season. So I'm going to trust them because I'm a trustful guy. And we're going to see what happens. It's PvP. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, the map is Belshir Vestige. H Jax, the top left. We got Duck Goose in the bottom right. Did we have a duck earlier? I think we did. Ducky. Yeah, we just had Ducky. We should have Ducky play Duck Goose. Or if, if someone was named Duck Duck Goose, it'd be Duck Duck Goose versus Duck Goose. I think that'd be pretty fun to watch. In any case, um, if you want to participate, you want to be the next one, stay tuned. We're gonna have, uh, we've been having trivia questions of sorts, riddles and whatnot, uh, to see if uh, you can, you're good enough. If you're fast enough, you're a faster typer. Fast enough typer to participate. Anyway, so PVP. This is a matchup that I find fairly fun. Um, so we'll have to see how these guys do this. Interesting little wall off, or interesting little opening build order here, as far as the positioning of these. I, I guess I don't mind it too much. I'm always the guy who gets his stuff trapped by my nexus. Like I'll have three probes just chilling, doing nothing. Um, okay, first gas up, then second gas. Two gas is up with two on each side. Cybercore is going to be a tad behind Thrash. So there's a little bit of a disparity here. For those of you who are like, okay, what's the difference between two gas and what's the difference between one gas? If you go one gas and then add the second gas after Cybercore, you're not delaying your Cybercore at all. Uh, which is kind of what I've been leaning to towards recently. If you make your two gases right away, like on 15, your Cybercore is going to be a tad delayed. That's just how it works. Um, but not a huge difference in, this, a difference in this point in time. We see a second gateway added on for HJAX. Here he goes from there. Only one gate still from Duck Goose, even adding on a Mothership Core. Actually, both players adding on Mothership Core. I don't know. So Mothership Core is, is kind of an intriguing thing in the beginning of PvP, to me at least. I'm the kind of guy who will go... Um, I'll go Core Double Gate, but I'll skip my Mothership Core in favor of just a bunch of Stalkers. That, that's what I'll generally do. Um, I'll open up with like five Stalkers to get some aggression back. There are different play styles you can go for, like you can be aggressive, you can be defensive, you can incorporate sentries, so on and so forth. Um, and each is, each is every, like, it's not like there's a right or wrong thing to do. Um, but stylistically, I feel like a Mothership Core is more of a defensive position to take. I mean, sure, there, there are ways you can be aggressive with that Mothership Core, and it's great. It can provide you high ground vision at times. But generally, it's going to be a defensive thing, and ooh, going for an expansion. Are they both going to expand? Three stalkers in the mushroom court. You can kind of be aggressive with that, but the danger about this is, if your opponent opens up three gate or something, like this can be a little bit dangerous. Poking out, you have to have pretty good micro. Photon overcharge on the nexus, probably. Two more stalkers being added on, as well as another pylon. No expansion sight. So this is a little bit tricky for you, Mr. Hajix. You need to identify. Okay, you're going for stargate. That's fine. I I'm okay with your build order so far. I don't see any glaring things wrong. Now you're not going to have detection right now. So that's going to be a little bit dangerous, so you got to be aware of that. But once you scout this natural, you should be relatively safe of what's going on. But h -tax, once you see this, you're probably also thinking, okay, uh, he's getting an expansion pretty fast. How aggressive do I want to be? You want to have a probe with this? Ooh, do you have a probe with this? Oh, no. 
So I feel like you should have a probe with this. If anything, just to build it to scare your opponent. And if you want to be more aggressive, building it right here um, to, be, to, be, to be able to continue the warp again. So definitely want to probe with this uh, attacking force. I don't have to take this next. Okay, Guardian Shield's going down. We're supposed to overcharge. There it is. Okay, nicely played. Well done. But now there's a little bit of vulnerability here. You need a Chrono Boost that are immortal right away because you don't know what's happening. This is exactly what you're doing. Great job. Adding on to the gateway. That's fine. I'm okay with cutting probes right now. Not, I, I mean, you should. What you should do right now, Duck Goose, is you should, be, you should have a probe on his side of the map over here and identify, okay, does he have an expansion down? Because you really need to know that. And if anything, honestly, if you had a probe over here right now, you could scout into his main base. There's no units here. You could scout the Stargate even, which is great to know. As of right now, though, he's not really being that aggressive. So you have to understand something uh, besides a four gate is happening at this very point. Well, unless he attacks with a bunch of units after this Photon Overcharge goes away, which is fine. We have an Immortal out, but you still have to be very aware of... See, now you only see five Stalkers still. So at this point, let, let's imagine a couple things. First, he hasn't added any more units, and you know this. Second, he doesn't have a natural... Uh, well, he just put down his natural now. Did I miss that? Anyway, put his natural down now. Uh, but you can see the timing of it and realize, okay, what's going on, and you can scout the Stargate kind of a thing. Um, cool. So... We have the Oracle coming across the field. And you haven't scouted this yet, Duck Goose, which again I'm not It's 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 something that's that's good to know, but you can have safety measures. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, nice little targeting. So now you can feel pretty safe. After seeing that recall, you know he's at home, you know he's worried about being defensive, so now you need to find out what what he's doing. And he's about to reveal it. We have an Oracle coming forward. Let's see how much he loses this. This is so scary. Um yeah, Forge is good to have. Something I'll do is like immediately th throw down a forge when I see this, so I can get a cannon and start upgrades. Then I kind of go towards like a charge on archon type of composition. Um, we'll see what you do. I mean, you have a Robo Bay on the field, and your opponent is going to Stargate. So you have to make that decision because obviously, if your opponent, oh no, probes, what probes? Good job, H Jack. By the way. Wow, eleven kills. Those are good. That guy paid for himself. Thirty-five to twenty-five. Great job, H Jax. I love this build that you're doing. Opening up with stalker pressure, following it up with an oracle, uh, getting a lot of worker kills, and now you're going into void rays. So when you're going void rays like this, like there's a timing where you're pretty vulnerable, which I'm sure you're aware of. Um, I wouldn't mind mixing in a, a century or two even. Um, but also you have got to be on top of your scouting, and sentries are good for um, hallucinating phoenixes and whatnot. To stay on top of that, because you don't have a, you don't have a robo. Um, so it's kind of hard to get those observers across. Adding on a second Stargate, which I'm okay with. Pretty cool. But there's a timing here where we only have like two Void Rays where he can hit like right now. Especially considering he just lost a lot of workers. So that's something you have to like imagine if he was attacking with this right now. Uh, with nothing but gateways attacking. So you got to be aware of that. But I think you should be able to hold it if that happens because you have Photon Overcharge. So I kind of like the way you're playing this so far. Um, now, H, uh, Duck Goose, you should be chronoboosting the heck out of your probes. This is not a good situation for you. You know you lost a lot of probes. So how do you come back? Dark Shrine might be okay. You know your opponent opened Stargate, so they might be far away from Robo, or from uh, Observer. You could try that, I guess. Um, and then try to be fancy. Again, it's tricky because you came behind. Hitting that timing right when your opponent finished doing damage with the Oracle, and you know he has an expansion, try to hit that timing because he delayed his tech a little bit to make that happen while you had two Immortals out. That could be a good thing. But we see H Jax. Nice little scout with the stalker. Ooh, spotting the lack of two gases. That's fairly important. You know your opponent's not taking up too hard. And you, you also have to, when you see no gases here and no expansion, you have to be wary of an all in type play. You just gotta, like, you gotta be super aware of that. Because if it's not taking two gases, what are they spending their money on? Well, ga additional gateways or something? Or you can make the presumption that he's still catching up in probes, which is kind of true. Which is kind of true. But I might have gotten the second two gases a little bit earlier. Nice little scout here. Going to spot the two Stargates. Now you have to make a decision. Oops. By the way, we have a Paul. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't approve or disapprove of these. Artosis predicts h jacks do you. Hashtag yes, Artosis. Or hashtag no, Artosis. And that's like a super meta question. I don't even know the answer. Because if you're saying yes, do you really mean no? I don't even know. But vote now. Tweet your answer with hashtag MLG. We'll see what people say. I don't even know how to read that. Artosis predicts. So if Artosis predicts h -Jax, then h -Jax, do you agree with Artosis? I don't even know. We'll see what people say. All right. So, Mr. Duck Goose, you're spotting a lot of Void Rays. What's your response? 
Uh, Templar are good, right? Storm can be good against Void Arians, but it's going to be a big positional thing. Void Arians aren't that mobile. So something you can try to focus on is maybe, oh, I love this pylon. Can you see it? He sees you. He sees that pro. Um, attacking in the main, attacking in the third kind of a thing can be really good. Void Arians aren't that mobile. Really take advantage of that by attacking with gateway units everywhere. Taking the third is important here because you know your opponent has a third base. So at this point, Duck Goose, you should definitely have a third down unless you're going for two base all in. Because you might be. Did you cut probes? Ooh, I think you might be. You're adding on five gateways. Yeah, you're going for two base all in. Okay, good luck. Now, Mr. Mister H Jax, to identify this, Hallucinate is good. Identifying this third. Have something here to make sure he doesn't have a third. Something here as well. And if you can see that, you can, oh, great job. Look at this. Are You you better have them stream muted, h Jax. I'm watching you. I'm watching you, man. Um, a Hallucinated Phoenix is great into the main. So you can see a bunch of gateways being added on. So now you you should probably have an idea of what's going on. Halt pro production, that's the first thing. Focus exclusively on making units. That's what you want. Exclusively units coming out. Delay this as much as possible. I don't know if I'd add on additional tech. I don't know about this. Because you know he's doing a two-base all-in. That tech won't really help you. So I feel like Duck Goose, you, or h you haven't identified this yet. A simple Hallucinated Phoenix could have identified it for you. So let's let's keep an eye on this. You're gonna see the warp. That's a good that's a good spot. Uh, I would be attacking very soon, Mr. Duck Goose. I guess I guess you're waiting for him to, to kind of back up a little bit. And now h is adding on five gateways. And imagine hitting before the like while these are halfway. Okay, distracting. The Voidoids is being sent to the main. This is a nice, t a nice, a very nice tactic here. H-Jax, knowing that this army is here is incredibly important. Obviously, this is your first knowledge of this army being here. Mothership Core is important here too, Duck Goose. You need to have your Mothership Core here. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Like, imagine a recall in this situation. You can commit yourself a lot further and not be scared of being caught. Um, I, I understand that maybe you're worried about counterattacks and puts an overcharge. Um, but this is, this is like an all-in type thing, so... You're still not making probes. Hmm. You made two probes. What is your plan? You gonna try to attack the national? Because you can, tr you can kind of make the decision to back up and take a third, but then you have to remake, start re remaking probes again. Well, let's see if this works. Oh, you just started storm. So I imagine you're just poking. There's no way you're gonna come into attack with, with storm on the way. You're gonna wa wait for that. And there's a third. Okay, if you're taking this third, you gotta start pro production back up immediately start that pro production back up uh because and uh, i guess you have to think about it because your main is kind of dried out drying out a little bit so i guess it's not a gigantic deal but at least get to get to 50 or 55 i think that'd be a good number leave like 10 here and then have these fully saturated the natural and the third and i think that's fine based on how this game is going uh h jacks you're double expanding uh, i'm not sure how i feel about that i guess i'm okay i guess i'm okay with it adding on tempest very fancy very fancy indeed Doctor's not going to be long for this world. Okay, so duckies, you need to be identifying these third bases. These, yeah. You need to have something over here, making sure nothing's there. Maybe even a pylon. Like, don't be afraid to have pylons across the map. Oh, is Storm done? Storm is done. Where are your storms? Oh, you got a storm. Time Warp would be great here for uh, for you, Mr. H-Jax. Oh, wow. Well, that's how you throw away your whole army. I'm getting flashbacks of the Axel Fall. Um, so, you didn't get your storms off. Like, you waited for storm, and then you didn't get your storms off, which isn't fun. Uh, these High Templar weren't even in the battle. And no reason to engage here, honestly. Like, while you have a third base, you don't really want to engage in your opponent's natural. You want to deny his third base and stay relatively defensive. Because if you're on three bases and he's only on two, you're happy, right? You're going to be a happy person. Um, so no pressure to really engage in that location, right? Maybe poke and prod, since he's over here, since he's over here, and then make him react, split up his army, and then that's when you attack up the gut and wait for storms. But I don't think you used any storms there. What you want to do is if you're if you're incorporating storms, kind of poke forward, but then back up. Be careful about time warp, and then leave storms in your retreat path. Maybe even a feedback on the militia core would be sick uh, to try. That might be good to try. But now H Jax, 177 to 96 in supply. Nicely played. Um, nicely played so far. Going into Tempest, which is fine. Having more map presence would be nice. I'd like to see some battle over these watchtowers. After having control of that, it's pretty important. Also, don't be afraid to get pylons across the map over here, over here. Um, you're floating some money. You're about to approach max. That's a great time to get a warp prism out. 
Like right now is a great time to get that warpism out. Where's your robo? I'm I'm kind of assuming you have a robo. H Jax, you're watching, you're listening to the stream. H Jax, you I'm watching you. I'm watching you, H Jax. I'm watching you. Are we on the same page or are you watching the stream? You should get a dark shrine right now. H Jax, you should get a dark shrine. That'd be really good for you right now. You need to get a dark shrine. Okay, H Jax, I'm watching you. Um, but anyway, H Jax is, is in a really good position right now. Uh, no reason to go push across, the, not to go push across the map. You're maxed, and you don't want to let your opponent back in it. Um, multi prong stuff is great. Adding on a bunch of gateways at this point is great too. Um, like sending a warp prism to the main, leave some supply open, attack there, then attack with the rest of your force with the mothership core into the third base. Because Nico is recall out. You got to be careful about feedbacks though. That can ruin your day. And honestly, make this baby into a mothership maybe. I'd like to see you, like it, it's fun to try it out. It's fun to it's fun to play around with. See if you like it. If your fleet beacon is done, you you have enough resources. You can definitely make that mothership core into a mothership. Now, from Duck Goose's point of view. You're going to have to be really cost efficient with these storms. Uh, that's how you're going to get back in this game if you get a lot of damage. Ooh, I love this. Great move. Great move. I love it. I'm really proud of you. Nice Sim City here, though. I like the I like the gateway position. I like everything about that. Zelt's going after probes, which is fine. But I still, Duckish, you need to be able to identify this base over here. Space over there. And yeah, that, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. And you need to be really cost efficient with these storms. That's going to be important. Um, but he's kind of letting you back in the game in a sense where he's not attacking you once he's maxed. Like that's the best timing he's going to get when he has a lead. Is when he's maxed attacking you. This is a terrifying army. You need to have your high tech over here. You need to have vision of this too. Maybe an observer or something. All right, let's see what, you, let's see what you're going to do here. You need money storms. It's absolutely important. High Templars, are they ready? Oh, picking some of them up. Why so fancy? I like the fancy. Oh, High Templars all bunching up. Okay, I think all your High Templar died. I like the idea behind the War Prison fancy stuff, but I'm not sure if that was the best way to execute it. Um, just continuing to kite back, making the storms happen. Unfortunately, H Jax is going to fall, or actually, Duck is going to fall. Cool. What else do I want to say? I think that was fairly straightforward. The biggest points being um, identifying when you need to take engagements. Like, Duck Goose, you had three bases, and your opponent only had two. So that's a great situation to keep a Zealot parked in each of those potential third bases. And that's a great way to um, to kind of retreat. Like, like, you don't need to engage here if your opponent's only on two and you're on three bases. You're going to engage like, when you're in an optimal position, because you're the guy on three bases. He should be the guy pressured to be attacking you. And when you have Storm, like, that's even more important. Like storm is better when you're being attacked, right? Because you can just retreat and then storm in your retreat path, and it's great. Unless you catch your opponent off guard, which I don't know, which kind of kind of hard to do. Uh, H Jax overall, nice play. I like the Oracle opening. I have no qualms with what you did. Identifying the two base all in um, earlier is important. Remember, you lost his third base. wasn't really necessary. Lose that as long as you're positioned properly. Made a lot of investments when you're being two base all in into stuff that you didn't necessarily need, like that fleet beacon. Um, once you identify two base all in and you're on three bases, you pump out those units. You don't build anything except units. It's okay to cut probe production too. Did you know your opponent's sacrificing everything to make this happen? You want to put all your resources into attacking units. Cool. Okay. I think I think we're good. I think we're good on that. That was fun. That was a nice little PvP. Which team? Like StarCraft? Okay. I don't even know that. You're going to have to tell me in my ear. Really? Oh, cool. Okay. All right, guys. Next trivia question. We're going to do bronze. I want to give some love to you bronze guys. We're going to do bronze. Love to the bronze. If you're a bronze player and you want to play, get ready for this trivia question. As I, Let me join the channel. I hope no one's already there. Lennox, if someone's already there, I'm. you're not coming up with tri trivia questions anymore. Oh, no one's there. Okay. 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 Wait, what was the question again? 
for you bronze players, if you're silver, if you're gold, if you're diamond, if you're platinum, if you're masters, if you're grandmasters, I'm turning you away at the door. You bronze guys, I want to help you get better at StarCraft. So, here's your trivia question. Who is the most recent acquisition of the StarCraft II team Dignitas? That is the channel. If you're a bronze player, join that channel. I'm watching closely to see who joins. If you are not a bronze player, don't worry. We'll have more opportunity for you in the future, and it's going to be awesome, and it's going to be fun. We got one. We got one bronzy. We got a silver. We got a masters. You're not allowed. Oh, gosh. So many people at once. No. Still only one bronze. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Lennox, it was too easy, man. When everyone... <sighs> Lennox is too easy. No, I, I know the first one. The first one is nuclear. And the second one is nefarious, I think. Nuclear. And... Nefarious. The answer was select. <laughs> All right, up. Guys, they're up. Nuclear. Okay. Um. Let's see. Nuclear versus nefarious. Please make and invite. All right, guys. It is time to take a quick break. Of course, uh, you're watching uh, community. Players who want to get better at StarCraft 2, join on the stream, and I give some tips over a VOD or over the, the stream of them playing. And then they watch the VOD afterwards, and hopefully it, it helps them uh, improve in StarCraft 2. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with the bronze match between Nefarious and Nuclear. Stay tuned.